Hello, hello, and welcome to The Connecting Point. I am Dr. Marcy, your facilitator for this discussion today. This is the place where creators connect to inspire, share their ideas and stories, to transform the world through raw and unedited talk. And today I am here with someone who is revisiting. He has been here before, but we're still gonna tell the connecting point for those who um, did not get a chance to watch the episode, Fatherhood Exposed, of which um, he explained his role as a father. And so I am here today with Mr. Stacy Dean. Welcome to the Connecting Points, Mr. Dean. Well, thank you, Dr. Simmons. Um, I'm happy to be here with you once again on the Connecting Point and uh, looking forward to our discussion so we can shine some light on the state of Black men in, in, in this world today. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you for yeah. having me on. The conversation would be a little different, y'all, from before, but we, we're going in. Um, now, the connecting point for us, I will repeat, um, goes back over 30 years. We grew up in the same town, went to the same high school. So Athens, Georgia is our connecting point, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're going to dive on in here. Stacey, I already told you what the topic is. Yes. Um, if any of you have been watching, you know that I've also done a series, The State of the Black Woman. Well, couldn't do just the black woman without looking at the black man. And so I called up on uh, Mr. Dean. Actually, we called up on each other, I guess, the way it worked out um, yes. to discuss this topic. Um, since he is a black man, yeah, he's that. Uh, so, Mr. Dean, let me ask you the first question. Sure, go ahead. Describe a black man. Wow. A lot, a lot of uh, adjectives and pronouns and all that good stuff. And now, uh, to me, being a black man uh, in my you know, of course, in this day and time, and, and where I grew up, you know, watching a death of a black man, it's, you know, we it's a stereotype that a lot of black men do, do not uh, take care of their families, do not uh, hold down jobs, uh, not act in their community. But I'm here to tell you different, uh, Dr. Simmons. Throughout my whole entire life, I've been on this earth, I beg the difference. Uh, I've always had great models of how to be uh, a black man. In this world, you know, of course, uh, through the eyes of my father, along uh, with other great black men that I've encountered through the course of time in my life. So, uh, to me, it's taking pride in, you know, taking care of your family first, or first honoring God, who's definitely the head of, of, of my life, but having a great relationship with Christ, uh, also to being a great provider for your family, your children, if you're married, your wife, but also to being a positive uh, light and influence in your community. Um, doing things that, you know, uh, making sure that the people around you appreciate you and respect you and uh, taking pride in, in, in the little things, uh, nurturing our children and uh, holding down jobs and all those things that Society to say that we're not doing, I beg the difference that we are doing. And, and, and in a lot of cases, we're leading the way because I feel like we're leading the way because we, you know, unfortunately in this country, the black man has, has uh, always been portrayed not to be uh, providers and not to be leaders in the community, but I beg the difference. Uh, it's, it's much harder for us getting out of our, our beds every day and facing the world that I think and believe in any other ethnic group that walk the face of this earth. You know, uh, we, we're constantly in a daily struggle, not just with the world, but sometimes our even most profound battle is with ourselves because we tend to hear society saying what we're not doing and, we, and, and sometimes 
we question ourselves whether or not we're worthy uh, to be on this earth, but we're more than worthy. Uh, we're kings. And so I feel as though, you know, pride and being a black man, uh, accepting accountability for everything that you, every walk of life, when it comes to, like I said, our children, our family, our, our relationship with Christ and our community. Okay, well, listen, I, I as I was listening to you talk, I did hear one word that stuck with me, king. Yes. Okay, and so um, when I look at black men, that word sticks out to me, period. Resilient, king. And so I also heard you mention um, a particular way that society looks at black men. Why do you yes. think? Why do you think uh, black men have, let's say, a stereotype attached to them? And first of all, what is that stereotype? Let's let's go ahead and put that out there. Um, well, the stereotype is that we're lazy, mm -hmm. that we're not uh, emotional. Uh, we don't express ourselves. We don't tell people how we feel. Uh, all all those things that you know that uh you know we're you know we tend to shut down a lot of things um you know for us you know just everyday things that happen to in our lives we have uh this thing about you know once again i think the biggest thing that really sticks out to me marcy is that stop the i'm sorry the thing that sticks out to me is that uh for us being providers and, and and not taking care of our families you know, that, that, that really, really, really is, is the one thing that I really pride myself on, uh, making sure that I, I, I'm able to provide for my children and not only that, but uh, take care of uh, my responsibilities. I always say this, Dr. Simmons, and you heard me say this all the time. It's about accountability and responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what it's always about with me. So uh, that stereotype and getting that segmentation off of us. Well, you know, I, um, you know that uh, I grew up around strong men um, who were and still are providers. Um, so I didn't know anything other than that. However, I've also encountered some that were not. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, my thing is just because there are some doesn't mean it's all. But let's be real. There are some. Yeah. who um, can be, you know, lack on their responsibilities. And because of that, it gives the rest a bad reputation. Yeah. So I want to know from you, Mr. Dean, what is your take on that? What I mean, how do you feel about those men who are not stepping up to the plate? And when I say well, stepping up to the plate now, I'm talking about being community leaders. Uh, I'm talking about being the head of their households. Well, and, Dr. Simmons, you know, you know, once again, you and I have conversations about this all the time. <laughs> it's just the other people don't. And, and people that are close to me understand how I feel about those that are not taking care of their responsibility, not stepping up to the plate, and being the... Uh, taking their responsibility that God calls us to be in our place in this world. Hey, hey, I have, you know, I have sympathy and I have some understanding depending on the situation, but I'm very big on accountability, Dr. Simmons. Hey, there's too much uh, awareness in the world and there's too much resource in the world for us to continue to be failing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, we have to you have to look at look back on 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 on, on the, how we, our upbringing is one, and, and I hear this all the time where there's a lot of dads are not in people's lives right now. A lot of black men are not doing this in the third, but there's still other people outside our home that we you know it's maybe that bus driver that you come in contact with every day, it may be that football coach, it may be that teacher. It may be the guy that stays right next to you across the street who understands how and important it is you have a positive role model in your life. So um, 
I make no excuses, Dr. Simmons. I really don't. I make no excuses for people not taking care of their responsibilities, especially when it becomes to, you know, being being a father and of course, you know, also being a husband and, and, and being a positive light in the community. And one of the reasons why I make no excuses about the thing because my, my father didn't allow me to make any excuses uh, mm-hmm. coming up. You know, uh, you know, he held my feet to the fire, as well as my brothers and my siblings. You know, I shared this uh, with some people and changing the picture of the final event at the Ashton Country Club this past weekend. I grew up in public housing, Dr. Simmons. Mm-hmm. And back then in public housing, uh, Hey, it was tough back then. You know, uh, our parents had to still get up and go to work every day, uh, but they didn't let our, our situation or our, uh, our circumstances make any excuse for us not being uh, accountable or being responsible for our expectations. Mm-hmm. You know, we had expectations in our home. And one of the things we had, some of the expectations that we had growing up in my, in my home was, you know, hey, accountability and responsibility. You know, it's your job to go to school, get your lessons, be respectful to your teachers, and also to, you know, making sure that you was always, always on your best behavior. Now, not to say I've never done anything, Dr. Sidney, when I was young. Oh, no, you're not going to say that anyway. Uh, no, because, I mean, you know, hey, you know, yeah. because, of, because of friends and peer uh, pressure and, other influences, you know, but it's always that little thought in the back of my mind, you know, mm. uh, hey, do I want to disappoint my mother and my father? Or do I want to disappoint, you know, other people that, you know, uh, that, that means stuff to me? So, you know, you know, it was always about accountability and responsibility. And, but um, unfortunately, Dr. Simmons, I, it took me a, a while to understand that but not living in the world where I came up in or you came up in, uh, things are a lot different. Mm-hmm. But once again, too, I think everybody has choices and everybody has decisions that, you know, how they want to uh, live their lives, what type of legacy you want to live, you know, leave behind when you leave this world. And I'm, there's always going to be two things when you come in contact with people, Dr. Simmons. You're going to have a profound effect on them in two different ways. It's going to be a positive, and it's going to be a negative. And I always tell my sons, them, hey, let your experience when somebody first meet, let them come away saying, hey, you know what? That young man, he has it. Or he has the potential to do something great. And the one thing that we always talked about, Dr. Sidney, I tell them all the time, do not let your name beat you there in a negative mm-hmm. way. So, yeah, so that's that's my take on that right there. Okay, well, you know, what do you think has caused, you know, I'll say quote, because I don't really agree with this, the decline of the black man? Uh, I really don't think it's a decline, Dr. Simmons. Uh, I don't I, either. I, but... I, I, I really don't think it's a decline. I, I think that the, the things that black men are doing, they're not getting reported, the positive things that black men are doing. They still focus on the negative things that black men are doing, but I, I, I I'm sincerely believe that uh, we still have, if not even stronger than that. Uh, once again, everybody I come in contact with uh, in my circle, and I look across and and I see you doing tremendous, tremendous things in our community. You know, we have elected black officials in our community. We have sitting appointed judges in our community. We have. Uh, you know, great administrators in our community, in both high schools, uh, Dr. Huff and, and uh, Coach Derricott is leading the high school. We have two great, great uh, basketball coaches in our community, Coach uh, Stephen Smith and Coach Thomas. And we have a list of, of, of black men that are getting up every day and making sure they're a positive role model in our community. It's unfortunate, though. It's unfortunate that if some, for some reason, for some reason, there's a there's a there's a lack of communication and connecting with the younger black men in our community, and that's what really kind of you know breaks my heart. And it's unfortunately the reason we, we, that disconnect is not there is because of the environment that they're growing up in, 
It's unfortunate, Dr. Simmons. You know, Athens was not filled with gangs back in the, you know, when I was coming up, you know. I mean, you know, we, we traveled in groups. You know, we had our own friends and stuff like that, but we didn't have a lot of gang influences that was going on. But I don't think it's declining in the black man. I, I really think that, once again, we're just not, it's not being put out there that we're, we're active in the community. And that's, a, that's unfortunate. Well, you know, I um I will vouch for what you just said because I I work with a lot of I, not a lot of men, but I'm in education and I work with men, and those are some of the men that I really look at as being men. You know, they they are protective. Um, when I I don't feel unsafe when I walk in the building. Why? Because they're standing outside. You know, it's the men that's there taking on the role of men as protectors. Meaning, you don't, it doesn't have to be your wife or your child. It could just be you protecting. I, I just see men as protectors. Um, right. And so when you're able to stand up and be that, then in my mind, I'm like, that's a real man. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but I know the conversation has been had in your circle and mine. Right. That... Black women are causing some of the issues with our black men. Now, I listen, I, I'm just going to listen to what you say first before I even right. jump over there. <laughs> but do you agree or disagree with that, that black women? Well, okay, I mean, you know, we're causing I, I, some issues with black men, are we? Well, Dr. Simmons, you know, the thing I, I say about some of the concerns I have with, with our sisters and, and black women is that, you know, at times I seem like what they're asking for can be a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need to be direct and straightforward what, 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 what we expect out of the black men. Um, you know, as far as us being providers and things like that, Dr. Sin, I'm just going to, you know, I thought about this and God gave me this, uh, when I was driving, because I was wondering when you were going to ask me this question. And I'm just here to tell you the days and the roles of, of, of marriages and, and, and being uh, when our parents were growing up, Dr. Simmons, it, it, it has changed. I mean, you know, expecting a black man to be the sole provider when it comes to the day and the world we're living in is, is totally impossible unless you are a professional athlete or NBA player or working work in the five, Fortune 500 company as CEO, it takes two. It takes two. Mm -hmm. And so I truly believe, Dr. Simmons, if, if both, you know, the black man and the black woman sit down and have a conversation mm -hmm. before going into relationships, how they can pull their resources together and be great and, and do some wonderful things because I truly feel as though you know, if, if 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 one person is carrying the load and, and giving everything they have uh, in the relationship when it comes to finances, and then the other person is not helping out or not making sure that things are secure on the back side of the, of the back end, it, it, it can bring about a lot of problems. So mm -hmm. I don't think I'm asking for the sisters are and, and the black women. Just sit down, mm -hmm. talk to them. And then my thing is Dr. Simmons, you know, I think people can do more things together than they are apart. You know, yeah. if if I love you, if I love you and I say that I love you, why would I sit back and watch you go to work every single day of your life and and I do nothing? Because it's more to, than, than, than just loving a black woman and laying on her backside. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We want to know that, hey, if things get tough, things get upside down, can we depend on you? To say, you know what, love, I got that. You know, uh, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be fine. But I just think it's a mutual respect for one another as human beings. You know, um, not taking each other for granted and not um, uh, 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 just, you know, just not being, you know, being mindful of how things are now. I mean, you no know, gas is not a dollar and twenty five cent anymore. <laughs> Everything you eggs is not cheap anymore. Everything that you do from electrical bills to 
So anything that you can think of involves money, Dr. Simmons. Even the water that we use, even the sometimes I feel like the air that we breathe, you know, <laughs> you know, it's gonna cost. Well, so, listen. Yeah. I you know, I when I think about, you know, my circle of women that I speak with and even some of the men that I talk with, um, some of them are saying that too. And then some, you know, they are okay with uh, taking care of themselves. They don't need this. They don't need that. Um, but I do know that women are saying as well, men are not up upright either. Some black men, they're not up front and not, you know, they don't communicate well. Um, and I think you mentioned to me a, while, a few days ago about emotions, you know, and women thinking that men are too emotional, then it makes them look kind of feminine or whatever. <laughs> and my reply to you was, no, not my circle. <laughs> so my thing is, what? <laughs> when, Go ahead, I'm sorry to when I was asking I the question earlier about do you think women, black women, are some of the issue here with our black men? I'm I'm really thinking in lines of are we not allowing our men to be emotional um, where they need to be? Well, well Dr. Tim, that's why I said too the confusion come in that one minute y'all tell us or they say, you know, you need to express yourself more, you know. Tell me what's on your mind. And then as soon as the man want to sit down and communicate with you, you're saying that, hey, you need to man up. You, you, you know, you, 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 you know, they're using the B word. You, you know, you being. And I'm like, hold on for a second. It, it's confusing. One minute you tell them, you know, we express ourselves. And then another minute then when we express ourselves, we've been too feminine. So how about just let us be human beings and let you know what's on our mind? How about when we have a rough day or we see or uh, 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 want to voice our opinion on something that we like or dislike? Let us give us that that space to to express ourselves without saying, you know, hey, you know, you know, you, you know, you just too much to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the one thing that you don't want to do, Dr. Simmons, anytime a, a black man wants to express himself to you and open up to you, the one time that you shut him out. He's not gonna keep. He's not gonna come back and express himself because he's gonna feel as though, hey, I tried that before. This is the feedback I get. So what happened is, we end up holding everything inside and keeping everything inside, and which is of, not good. Which is not good. Instead not of communicating to the, the 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 black woman in the relationship we're in, then we tend to uh have to depend on others outside our homes, you know, who had to call on a friend to talk to them or you know, you know, and unfortunately sometimes it be another person with a with a nice whispering ear, you know. And so uh we just have to be mindful of of, of how how we trying to uh, tell a black man how he should feel. Like I said, once he once he wanna express himself to you, allow him to express himself to you. Because if he's expressing himself to you, that says that he trusts you and he wants to tell you how he feels. Mm -hmm. Well, then I've also heard where um, a lot of black men are saying single black moms are raising sons to be too emotional. So that's coming from another end too. Now, if the men are saying that black women are raising their sons to be too emotional, then that's kind of like a, um, what do you call it? Uh, Double standard, or double standard. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Double standard. Now, well, I mean, I I applaud the single black mom. I really do because I, I as as a being a single dad too, I know everything that you guys have to go through if you raise that child by yourself. The only thing I say to the single black mom is that you know, hey, if you allow. So you know, just just give just give that 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 father a chance to still be in that child's life, regardless of whether or not you're there or not. Somewhere down the line, that child is going to need a positive influence from a man's perspective, whether it be your uncle, your dad, or the, the guy at the school. Um, I think moms try to make up for their dads not being present. Of course. 
in their lives with and, and, and it tends to not hold them accountable. Now it's one thing that you have a daughter and you holding her accountable and you making sure that she stays in line of course, but then you letting your son fly. You know, uh that's 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 that right there is a it's a totally, totally different uh uh mindset in my in, in my opinion. But now uh, you know, and once again, I I I Dr. Sims, I would not sit up here and, 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 and bash single moms because like I said, I, I understand the the role that they're playing and the position that they're in. But you you as a single mother if I had any advice to them, make sure that your son's gonna have a positive role model, positive black name in their lives. Mm -hmm. And once again, too, make sure that you know you let them understand that hey, even though your father's not present in your life right now, I still expect you to behave a certain way. I still I still expect you to go to school, do the things that you do. And guess what? If your dad is not there. And you reach out to him and he, he chooses to go a different route, then make sure that you have other people in the community that's sitting around and say, hey, you know what? Hey, I'm here. You know? So it's, it's, it's a village mentality. And, 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 but I, like I said, I, I, I just think that, you know, and I, I say this all the time, Dr. Simmons, you know, sometimes moms tend to let, let them stay on the bottle too long. <laughs> Take that ball you know, off you say that all the time, but listen. Take that ball off them. And there's nothing wrong with we understand a mother's love. A mother's love is 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 is, is something different. But I also tell you too though, Dr. Sam, there's nothing like a father's love me. You know, uh, a father's man, you know, my, my best friend always told me, they told his son, Your mama carried you for nine months, but I'm gonna go carry you for a lifetime. And to me, that's deep because I'm telling you, uh, there's been a lot of situations where, you know, hey, you know, uh, dads are being called upon and then they're stepping up, you know, I mean, you know, they're stepping up. So, um, like I said, not going to bash moms, love, love the single parent moms, but allow these fathers to be in these children's life. I don't care if he's not paying you a dime for child support. Let that man establish a relationship with his child. And most of the time, if you let him establish a relationship with his child and he feel like he's a part of that child's life, you ain't going to have to ask him for that. He's going to make sure his child or his children have everything they need. So you got to separate your feelings when you're in a relationship when it comes to that. Yeah, and and you have to separate your, your emotions from a lot of things sometimes when it involves making decisions, um, male or female. Sometimes we can get emotional and make some wrong choices and say some wrong things. And and so we have to be mindful of that when raising our sons and daughters. Um, I also wanted to ask you, which I've heard people say this in conversation, some men, um, they feel misunderstood in society as a whole. Um right. Do you feel that way as a black man that you feel under misunderstood? Quite a bit, Doctor Simmons. Unfortunately, I feel, especially when it comes to relationship. You know, uh, I truly feel I can't. I truly feel a lot of friends, a lot of guys I talk to, they just want to be in a solid relationship where they can come home. To their, to their families and, 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 and mm -hmm. first of all feel appreciated. Uh mm -hmm. when we when we come home and we talk to our better halves or you know our wives or significant others. And uh we just we just want to let it let it be known that hey, you know, we're not we we're, we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. But each and every day that when we get up and we walk out that door, we're laying on the line for our family. And so uh you know, to be misunderstood, a lot of times being misunderstood is come from not communicating. Mm. Not communicating. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. um, I think that some of a lot of this stuff can be resolved by simply communicating one another. You know? Well, what about in the workforce? I mean, do you feel misunderstood in society? Let's go away even from relationships. 
relationships is one thing, but what about in the workforce? Um, I've some heard kids. people say in school, some young, uh, young adult black men say they feel misunderstood in colleges. Uh, so do you feel misunderstood in the workforce? Well, yeah, in, in, in certain instances, you know, because uh, Dr. Simmons, no matter what we do, you know, we can be the most qualified person on the job. But we always got to, you know, hold ourselves in a high esteem because of segmentation mm -hmm. of us not being hard workers or we're not smart enough or we don't know the job. That's, that's farther from the truth. You know, um, and even in school, you know, our kids, unfortunately, uh, sometimes when they walk through the door, you know, uh, they already have this, you know, thing attached to them. My thing is, Dr. Tim, get to know the person first. You know, get to know that person on the job. See, can that, is that person de dependable and reliable? And, and, and watch what he does, how he interact with his coworkers, and how he interact with his other peers at school. And uh, see, you know, look through the eyes of being a, a stop. My thing is, I wish people would just stop stereotyping people altogether, period. Period, yeah. Yeah. Whether you're white, black, green, or yellow, how about just looking at me as an individual, as a human being, and 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 then, you know, give me your opinion or pass your judgment on how I am as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, what kind of person I am first before you put a tag on me. So, yeah, but and you, you know, know if you really look at human beings, everybody has something that is not gonna make you feel like they are the you know the best or whatever everybody got a little something going on and everybody has some good in them so yeah. um if you allow the good to come through like you said just through communication so mm -hmm. that can cancel out some misunderstandings in the workforce in school in relationships whatever if you're just being who you are and communicating now, Mr. Yeah. Dean, yes. I got to say this. What's that? Dr. I got to say this. <laughs> what do you think is going on with the relationships between um, our young Black boys and Black men? Because clearly, you know, I'm just going to say this. I teach. I'm in there. I'm in the trenches. Um, and I see disparities uh yeah. i've taught in predominantly white schools and i'm teaching now in predominantly black schools okay um and when you get to our culture there seems to be a disconnect uh so much so that some of our black boys come to see teacher female teachers as their saving hope their grace um, rather than looking at the male. Some of them even are offended by male teachers um, yeah. saying anything to them. So where do you think that disconnect has come from? Well, I think that disconnect, uh, it comes from, and it's unfortunate, the absence of the dads in the home. Uh, but Dr. Tim, I'm here to tell you this too. A lot of disconnect comes from two, and it's unfortunate, and, and if I wish I had the answer to this, but we as black men, older black men, when we go to these young black, black men or these younger black boys and stuff, and we, you know, when we come to them, we come to them, and Dr. Summers is going to be frank and honest with you. When, we, when I come to a young man or I come to my sons, then I'm trying to teach them, I'm trying to show them, hey, this is what the world is going to give you. And I'm trying to prepare you to understand that, hey, this world don't owe you anything. But as a black man, you know, hey, I understand you guys. And I, you want to be emotional or you want to be able to stress yourself. But, you know, you better be you better be ready to deal with this thing called life in this world. Uh, the movie Fisher, uh Denzel Washington in that movie, I, I one really, of my favorite really, movies. <laughs> yeah, I really understand when he said, "Hey, 
My job is to make sure people do right by you. Make sure people do right by you. And unfortunately, Dr. Simmons, it's not easy growing up being a black man in this country. You know, it I mean, you never know, has we, been. Yeah, we, we, we've gone through a lot. But I, I still think it's, it's the gene and the DNA that we're built out of that God blessed us with that we can overcome over, uh, any obstacles that, that we face. The one, the one disparity I, I think that I, I struggled with, Dr. Simmons, and I'm still trying to figure this out. Was a, what was the gap or the love for one another at their age from 18 to 24 or from 14 to 26? You know, what, 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 what is it that about you cannot love, look across that table from somebody that looks exactly like you or same skin tone and you, and you don't have love for your fellow man? What, what, where do we, where do we, you know, lose each other on that aspect? Because every time I come to terms with, with, with my own son, or any any young black male or black man, I always try to make sure they understand that hey, I'm coming from a place of love. I'm coming from a place of love, and 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 I I think too, you know, once again too, I'm working on that doctor, and that's something that I can tell you. Anything I struggle with, sometimes on a daily basis, is is and so the only thing that I say my solution, what I try to do, doctor, tell me. Any young black man or any person I come in contact with, especially young black boys, I try to be a light for them and I try to let them know that, hey, if nobody ever told you today that I love you, I tell you that I love you. And I try to do that through example, too, by leading through example, by giving them a word of encouragement. Hey, you know, or sometimes, you know, you know, may have to give them a few dollars and they may be down on their luck. Anything to show them that, hey, you know, there's somebody that looks like you that loves you, man. You know, and 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 the thing that you know, I want to, if, if, if God just hear my prayers, Doctor Tim, you, you just hear my cry. Let's cut back on all the senseless gang violence and killing and and, and hurting one another as, as as a community, especially as young black men. You know, I be honest with you, Doctor Tim, me and my best friend, and we talk about it all the time. And at this point in time, Dr. Simmons, I don't fear the white man right now. I don't have any, I don't fear any man. But the one I got my eyes on is the same people that look like me because I'm saying to myself, what are y'all going to do next? You know, what, 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 where does the anger come from and the animosity? Because Dr. Simmons, so much resources out there that you can find resources to help you with anything as far as mental health concerns. Or you know, you know, you you have other black men that want to love on you and show you love. So that's some of the things that I that, that I'm, I'm I'm struggling with as a, as a black man right now, sitting at this table talking to you tonight. Well, you know, what came to mind as you was talking is love has no gender. So I think a lot of our young boys are lacking love. Um, from mothers and fathers, but the one source where they really need it is from a man. And yeah. I think um, pure love from a man is viewed upon as gay or something, you know, but I think our men, our men, the older men, need to embrace our young men and they gonna come to you raw they might come to you cussing they might come to you smelling like we but you got to be able to embrace them and love on them in a way that they understand you have to start where a person is and then move them up to where you are you don't just say when well, nah, i forget my children all right uh yeah whatever and i think that's what's going on we're not let me say this. When I was growing up, I saw men mentoring young boys. I saw it all the time. They didn't necessarily say it. They just did it. It was just yes. something they did. If you're in their community, they did it. They spoke to you and said something. Now, yeah. you know, I hear a lot of men saying, oh, you know, I want this and that. But where are you? Are you actually going out trying to talk to these young men? What are you doing? Yeah, well, Dr. Simmons, I, I, every day I walk out my front door, I know I'm going to encounter somebody I either uh, got to know 
over the years at Super Shows and my third year at Super Shows, or I coach Little League football uh, uh, over the period of time, or know me personally through family members. Uh, I can honestly say, Dr. Simmons, that, you know, the majority of the, the men that in my circle or in my age, they have a genuine love for our young black men. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the problem comes in and lies that, that if you don't see this child every single day, and they, they may go back home to their community, but they see the guy hanging on the corner, or they see the, one of the gang members hanging out, and they're showing them love, too. If they think it's love, but it's really not. Because if you love someone, if you see little Johnny want to hang out with you, you shall know, Johnny, you need to take your butt in the house and get ready for school tomorrow. That's love. So it has to be, it has to be taught. Uh, my prayer, like I said, every single day is to figure out a way that we can get, get to our young black boys and let them know that they're loved. And let them know that I appreciate it, that, 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 you know, that, hey, you know, life may throw you obstacles, but there still is hope. Uh, me and you, I joked about this the other day. But I think you still hope, Dr. Simmons, because I, I, I meet some great kids, man. I, I mean, I mean, I see it every day. I, I think the world of my two sons, and, and sometimes, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are close to me may think I put a lot of pressure on Taylor and Tyler. But I tell them all the time, hey, man, much is given, much is required. You know, hey, and so um, I only want the best for my children. But I not just want the best for my children, Dr. Simmons. I want the best for everybody's child, mm-hmm. you know, everybody's son, you know. And uh, it, it, it really breaks my heart when I see a lot of kids make poor decisions and it costs them a lifetime of heartache. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, um I was listening to um, a man of God on on a podcast recently, and he said something that stuck with me. And it was, God honors consistency. So if you're going to love on a young man, be consistent. I... People would tell you, if a person not consistent, I said, go on now, because I... I don't even let my students, I remember having a program uh, in my school building that I thought was good for my children, but the person wasn't coming consistently. And I said, just don't come no more. Do not come and disappoint my children. And when I say my children, it's the, all the children I see, I said, I, we don't want the program. Because if you cannot be consistent, that's not sending a good message. And so if you as a, Black man, you out there listening, if you're not going to be consistent and look up on these young men, then don't start because that hurts them worse. If you're not going to be consistent in anything you do, don't, don't, don't fake the funk, as they say. Just, just go on. (laughs) I I, I agree with you. Uh, if 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 somebody a lot I, mean, I get I get calls all the time one of me being a part of certain programs in the community. And because I've got so many different things going on, if I know I can't be there a hundred percent and I can't be all in, I say, hey, this is not the right time for me. Because I know once you start start a, start something, a relationship with these young black boys in this community or with any type of thing that you're doing in the community, consistency. Consistency is, is key, and so I agree with you one hundred percent on that. You know, hey, I I I, I don't like wasting people's time because I my time is valuable to me as well. You know, and I the hardest thing, Dr. Simmons, is telling somebody no because you know they thought enough of you to come and ask you for the help. But the one thing you don't want to do is to be inconsistent, and 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 they don't get anything from that. Right. Right. Well, I tell you, I I have um, watched you and many other men that I encounter, and it makes me uh, proud when I see Black men who are helping uh, in the community, who are protecting, who are providing. And when I say providing, I'm just not talking about finances. We've got to get beyond that, too. Provision comes in all kinds of ways. You know, if I'm providing quality time for somebody, 
I'm providing. If I'm providing a listening ear, I'm providing. And so um, we've got to look at different ways of doing things and not be channeled into one way of thinking when it comes to our young black boys, our black men, black women too. I mean, we just got to um, look beyond just that narrow vision that I think so many people have with raising um they're young black boys. And they black boys grow up to be black men. Exactly. And now you see, and that's why it gets kind of scarce, ladies. <laughs> because the way they're raised. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what I'm hey, saying. Stop, I mean, let me just say this too. Because I mean, you know, you know, it's it's some young black boys out here being raised by some good families. But unfortunately, they 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 get sometimes with the wrong crowd. So you know, especially I think that's uh, you know we got to understand this too, because of the world that we live in. You know, uh, it's a lot of kids, a lot of parents are doing what they're supposed to do out here with their children. But unfortunately, our kids get with the wrong crowd. They make poor decisions, and and that's that's part of life. Yeah. You know, so we you know we can't beat ourselves up, especially when you know you done right by your children. You know, you know you've done the best by your children, but unfortunately, you know, because of the music, because of oh. social media, because of other influences, sometimes it, it, it tends to overpower them. But, you know, you have to trust in God and, and let him intervene on some things. So that's what I just want to give you a little take on that right there real quick. Wow. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. Dean. If there was anything that you would like to tell black men um, that could inspire them, what would that be? I, I would like to tell any, any, any uh, uh, black man today, whether you're young or you're old, that God has so many things in store for you that you are uh, more than a conqueror, that you are, you are destined to do great things, that your situation did not define who you are, and that if you put your put God first, uh, and love people, respect people, mm -hmm. uh, give, be a servant, you know. And uh, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be uh, NBA star, NFL star. Just be a productive person in your community. And give and watch how God will show you. God loves a cheerful giver. It doesn't have to be monetary stuff. It can be just by delivering a, a service to something or someone. Be an asset and not a liability. Mm -hmm. And that God will open up so many doors for you. Lord knows I, I, I'm a testament to that. I wake up every day and, and I thank God for everything that I have. But, you know, a lot of times people are like, Dean, why are you always giving yourself away? And, you know, you, do you ever keep things for yourself? And I'm telling them, hey, well, you have an overflow of God's blessing. He wants you to, you know, he wants you to share that blessing with us. Mm -hmm. And so I try to make sure that I, I you know, I have a, I'm a giving person. But I'm telling y'all, young black men, just, just, just love on each other, man. And just be good to one another. I'll just tell them that. And yeah. I would like to give this point to ponder before we end this discussion. Black men, what are you doing to show your kingship? Yeah. Kings, young, young kings, old kings, what are you doing to exhibit yeah. your kingship? Point to ponder. Okay. Now, Mr. Dean, how can people reach you to be a motivational speaker? Because I'm saying it right now. Uh, if if he, Mr. Dean is a motivational speaker, so how can people contact you without giving out your cell number? Well, you can you can reach me at deanstacy69 at yahoo.com. And you can also reach me at stacydean at fcs-cis.org. And um uh, and once again, Dr. Simmons, you know, I don't mind giving out my cell number. I mean, no, somehow, we don't. No, no, no. No, no cell time. numbers. 
I'm seven numbers. But you can reach me at those two email addresses, or you can always reach out to Dr. Simmons at the connection point. Um, and I just believe in encouraging other people and speaking life into other people, Dr. Simmons. So that's 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 my take on that. So there you have it. You need somebody to talk to you, young men. Uh, you have the information. And like I say every week, if you would like to um, join me in a discussion, something that you're passionate about, that you have researched and you know what you're talking about, I would love to have you reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com, the Connecting Point for Creators group, which is on Facebook. Just send us a request to join. It's a group of creators of all kind, all kind. Um, and it's a point of networking. It's a point of inspiration, daily inspiration. All you got to do is send um, a request to join. Or you can just, hey, find us, Google, Google Dr. Marcy. You'll find a way to contact me. Um, this show airs on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. on Instagram TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, and that's the Instagram. On uh, Wednesday nights, you can get on KBCEN TV, Spotify, and Anchor. And so all I ask you to do is click like and share so that others can be inspired. Now, until we get this moment again, peace and blessings. Thank you again, Mr. Dean. Thank you too, Dr. Simmons. God bless. Bye-bye. I would like to invite each and every one of you to have a discussion with me. Yes, I want to partner with you. Let's have a discussion. What are you passionate about? What do you believe will inspire others? Is it your testimony? Is it your life experiences? Or is it something that you just know about that you know will help uplift someone and transform the world for the better? If that's you, reach out to me at drmarcyts at gmail.com. That's D-R-M-A-R-C-Y-T-S at gmail.com with your contact information, your topic of choice, and the best day and time to contact you. And someone will contact you to schedule a discussion. All you got to do is know what you want to talk about, do the research, and make sure it is something that can uplift and change, transform the world. Let's do this together.